and the Lord be with you. And welcome to a review of the readings, a children's message, a sermon, and uh, uh, prayers for Pentecost in the year of our Lord, 2020. Hi, I'm Pastor Eric Van Syke here at St. Thomas Lutheran Church, and this is a celebration of the birth of the Christian church with the Holy Spirit poured out uh, at Pentecost, and uh, you'll hear that in the readings from Acts chapter 2. Uh, the Old Testament reading is, is back as it had been replaced uh, during the uh, resurrection season with a reading from the book of Acts as well. Uh, today, Terry Knoll once again uh, plays her violin for the opening hymn, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. She'll play through it once and then pause the video to uh, reflect on the selected verses for that hymn. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for this Pentecost. O God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the readings, we return to an Old Testament reading each week. After the last seven weeks, the week of Sundays of the celebration of the resurrection, the Old Testament reading was replaced by a reading from the book of Acts. We still have a reading for the book of Acts this week, but the Old Testament reading returns from Numbers chapter 11, verses 24 to 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men from the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. And then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, 
My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? I would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is the account of Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues, as of fire, appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But other mockers said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this Pentecost is from St. John, the seventh chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. And the Lord be with you. As you can see, there's some new colors on the altar and around my neck today. It's red because it's Pentecost. And uh, this is the celebration of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Pouring is an important word here. As we hear Jesus saying, if if anyone's thirsty, to come to him and drink, and that rivers of uh, living water will pour out from him. But you know, sometimes in life you can feel a little dry, like when you're mad at your sister or your brother or they're mad at you or something's just not going right or you're hungry and it's still an hour before it's time to eat. And so you start to grumble. Well, that's... Uh, that's what sin does. It kind of dries you out. 
instead of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is using an image of water there, and as the Holy Spirit was poured out at Pentecost. And uh, as we receive the water from the Lord, then we are able to pour that water of love and forgiveness and patience and kindness to others. It's like a sponge. Sponge are wonderful things. They're a lot of fun. And, I, and I'm going to stay dry today, but you know, a sponge is... Uh, it works best after you wring it out, and then it's ready to be filled with water, but then it can't hold any more water until it gets wrung out again. And our Christian life is the same way, that we get filled with the Holy Spirit as we study God's Word and read God's Word and hear God's Word as our parents tell us about Jesus and read to us from the Bible. We're filled up, and then we, it, it, we can... Uh, then it's time for us to uh, take that and squeeze it onto other people as we're kind to them and care for them and tell them about Jesus and how he died and rose again for us. And then it's time to get filled up again as we hear God's word and uh, learn about Jesus. And then we're able to be squeezed out as we help other people throughout the week and tell them about Jesus. So the Christian life is being filled and then squeezed out, and then being filled and squeezed out. So it's great today that you're being filled, and now God's ready to use you throughout the week to let other people know of his love for them through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Thank you for listening as we continue now with uh, a look at the message hymn. Pause the video and reflect on these wonderful words to the hymn, Hail the Festival Day. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, and Jesus' words, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So chronologically, we kind of move back in time. This has happened uh, uh, with Jesus before his death and resurrection. But today we're celebrating the fulfillment of that in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection. Let me do some teaching here about Pentecost and give a little bit of background. Pentecost is 50 days, penta meaning five, 50 days after the Sunday of the resurrection. But here again is a connection to the Old Testament and the festivals of the Old Testament. This is a day of Jewish observance of the anniversary of Moses on Mount Sinai receiving the Torah from God up on Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments, when they were in the wilderness. Now that event on Mount Sinai happened 50 days after Passover uh, when they were released from uh, captivity in Egypt after the 10th plague and the exodus is underway. And so that was 50 days prior to the event on Mount, uh, Mount Sinai. It's also a, a harvest festival, a time when people would bring in the first fruits of the early harvest into the temple uh, as an offering and sacrifice to the Lord. So we have this layering on of a new beginning in our relationship with God, with the people of God on Mount Sinai, as well as the people of God, a new beginning with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at uh, at Pentecost, uh, 50 days after the resurrection of Christ. So we see this fulfillment of Christ. No longer are we slaves to sin, but we are new creations created in Christ Jesus to serve him. And this was one of the days of obligation that when Jews from all over the world would come to Jerusalem, one of the three uh, celebrations. So God brought in the first fruits. His apostles were moved by the Holy Spirit to harvest the people of faith and bring them into God's kingdom. So Pentecost marks the covenant of Christ and the new beginning of the Christian church. Now the, the flowing waters of life continue to flow through us as we build the community spiritually. But sometimes things can feel so dry, spiritually dry. The grind of the world's kingdom robs us of the joy of being in God's kingdom. There's a lot to be dry about this pandemic is uh, wearing people out at uh, learning to work from home, learning to school from home, 
uh, dangers of unemployment or underemployment. And then imagine uh, through all this to have a tornado come ripping through your community and affecting your home or floods like in Chicago and Wisconsin and Michigan. Spiritual dryness can, can affect the decisions we make. Dryness can find yourself saying, along with a lot of people, isn't life hard enough without this God? Jesus knows of your dryness. He went to the cross and suffered the wrath of God who turned away from Jesus because all of our dry sin was placed upon him on the cross. The prophetic 22nd Psalm describes this dryness on the cross. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws, and you lay me in the dust of death. Jesus was moved to cry out on the cross the opening words of that very psalm when he cried out, My God, my God, why have you turned away from me? In our dryness, in our prayers of dryness, you know, we're talking to the water tower of spiritual power. That's fun. I want to say that again. So in our prayers, who are we talking to? We're talking to the water tower of spiritual power. You're talking to God. He raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus ascended into heaven and promised the Holy Spirit would come to remind us of what Jesus taught, and the Spirit is still teaching us today. Life is tough and can feel bone dry, except for the refreshing outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the midst of it all, where you filled up like sponges so that we can be, when life squeezes us out, we can be re renewed and refreshed. By the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is associated with water and new creation ever since the creation in Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, as we see the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters, the face of the deep. The Spirit descended upon Jesus at his baptism and is, and is described as poured out onto the heads of the apostles. The Spirit is active in water as it's poured onto our heads in baptism. I recently saw a documentary. I enjoy documentaries from time to time, find them streaming online. And this documentary was about Dr. Fujita. Now, he is the gentleman who came up with the Fujita scale. It's now the enhanced Fujita scale, the EF scale, f describing the power of a tornado based upon the amount and type of damage. So perhaps, for example, uh, if, if leaves have just blown off a tree, that might be an EF1 uh, tornado on the Fujita scale. But if the tree is gone, that'd probably be an EF5 on the Fujita scale. Uh, so Dr. Fujita, when there was a storm, had to get there quickly to the location of the damage so he could assess the damage, because that's how he would determine the scale of the, the strength of the tornado. And he had to get there quickly because people began to rearrange the scene of the destruction as soon as they can, people are, are driven to that. They start picking up and organizing because they want to get things back to normal as soon as possible. But sadly, with the bigger storms, there's often nothing left. There's nothing left to, to pick up because there's nothing left. And after the storms of life, you will be left with nothing because you can't take it with you. And much of what you have will be useless to you on the day of your death. Martin Luther <clears throat> is credited with saying, God our Father has made all things depend on faith, so that whoever has faith will have everything, and whoever does not have faith will have nothing. As Jesus said, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. So Pentecost is a reminder of the fact that we experience supernatural power of God, the supernatural power of God. Christianity is not simply a, a rational philosophy. We are new creations created in Christ Jesus with the miracle of faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, faith that can only be created by God through the Holy Spirit. So these are times of walking, when walking in faith is challenging. 
These are the times to encourage one another and to listen to each other as God listens to us. The river of faith is flowing from the heart of God to your heart and through your heart to the hearts of others as you tell them the good news and the love of God in the name of Jesus. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Let us pray for the church, for all in need, and for the whole of God's creation, that today we celebrate the hope that is ours through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who took the wounds of death into his body on the cross for the sins of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that we may have confidence in Christ, who ascended into heaven to clear the way for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For people who do not know you, that the river of life might flow to them, and that they may know your peace in the midst of their grief, in the midst of change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have need of healing, or are now dying, that they're healed according to your will and hold the confidence of your love by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the coronavirus and all such things be kept away from people everywhere, and those infected be released and healed. Especially we lift up to you Judy and her husband Bob. We pray for their continued recovery, and that the virus is soon seen no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in the medical community who are working tireless hours to help others. Also protect the first responders and men and women of the military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in local, state, and federal government in the United States and around the world who have to make difficult decisions, as we especially lift up to you, Mayor Bobst, Governor DeWine, President Trump, grant them wisdom and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Guide our steps back into the building at St. Thomas, where on June 7th we will once again gather in person with one another. Guide our teams who are preparing plans for our return to public worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And grant us patience with one another and help teachers and students continue to learn and grow. Bless those who graduate with a sense of accomplishment and an eagerness to serve where you have guide them in their vocation. We pray that classes are as normal as possible as uh, we come to the end of the summer in August and September and classes resume. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We marvel at your creation and the study of your creation through the sciences that use such things as the space station. So guide all space programs with your hand of safety as we marvel at your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your risen, healing, wounded hands for our sake, we commend all for whom we pray, and use the prayer of our wounded healer, Jesus the Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. Pause the video and enjoy these verses from Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed, a hymn of Pentecost. <laughs> 